Scared of cast iron? Raise your hand high, honey. The only time you fear cast iron is when it's in your wife's hands and she's fitting to hit you. That is the only time that you should ever be afraid of cast iron. I got to get a rag. You know, there's cast iron all over the world anymore. A lot of cast iron in the United States is good, and there's still a lot of bad cast iron out there, too. Everybody in the world sells it anymore. You got to where you can get it at Bass Pro, Kmart, Walmart, Tractor Supply, Bass Pro, all kinds of outdoor shops, even Victoria's Secret sells it on occasion. <laughs> so when you go to buy you a piece of cast iron, I still think the, the perfect backyard size is either a 10 or a 12 inch oven. That'll sort of get you by on whatever you wanna make. A 12 inch oven will hold 20 biscuits. You can cook a cake in it. You can cook brownies in it. You can cook anything in it you can cook in the house. But we go to the store and buy it, there's some really important things that we gotta know about it before we ever purchase it. You get in there to that store and you find it and it's in a box and you say, I believe I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy that. First of all, Take it out of the box and look at it. Now they're gonna come walking down that aisle in just a minute and they're gonna say, hey, what are you doing? You can't take that out of that box. Tell them, I never bought a car in my life that I didn't drive first. I ain't about to buy a piece of cast iron that I can't see. The most important thing to me when buying cast iron anymore, when you get it out of that box and you turn it over and look at it, it should say made in the USA best cast iron there is in the world then you think to yourself hey it says made in the USA it's all right but if you're buying a Dutch oven it should have three legs a camp oven won't have any you can still cook with a camp oven if it's got this kind of lid on it and you've got a trivet to set it on because you ain't got no legs to hold it up but we're buying a Dutch oven it's got three legs you want to make sure that these legs are capped, that they're sealed. Because so many times, a lot of them companies don't, they're hollow. Every time you use them, set them down in the ground, pick them up, set them down, you pack them full of dirt. Then you get a little moisture in there, then you get that disease that cast hates worse than anything, and that's rust. Then it gets weak and a leg breaks off, and then you gotta take a gun and shoot it because it's crippled, you can't use it no more. So we know it's got three legs, it's made in the USA, let's look at it. Make sure that bottom in there is slick as a baby's butt. There's no cracks, no blemishes, nothing sticking up anywhere to hang on. Because when you try to clean it, it's hard, but also it gives a chance for anything to live in there that you can't get off. Look at the side walls. If it's any thicker or thinner in one place or another, I'm going to look for me another one because a lot of times in the molding process, you'll find some every once in a while that is really thin on one side. That's a weak spot. It ain't supposed to be that way, I promise you. So we've looked at it. We've made sure it's got them good legs. It's made in the USA. The inside of this thing is just good as gold. It's got a bell on it. You make sure that they're attached on opposite sides. Because if they're not and they're on the same side and they ain't crimped together good and you're cooking a cobbler in there and you're going to carry it over, the bail falls off of it and it runs down your leg, it ain't pleasant because I've been there. So make sure that this bail is secure. Then we're going to take this lid and we're going to look at it the same way. Make sure it ain't got no cracks, no blemishes, nothing anywhere. Make sure this bail is secure. You look real good, make sure it ain't cracked nowhere. Then we're gonna put that lid on that oven. A lot of times in shipping and manufacturing both, somebody got in a hurry. They put a lid on there that wasn't molded for that oven exactly. And when you get it on there, you'll know cause it sort of rocks around. It ain't sitting on there good. When it gets hot, it's gonna get a whole lot worse, I promise you. That thing should freewheel around there. Cause you want it to seal. You don't want it to set up. My biggest pet peeve against cast iron today is what they did to the lids. 
They put names on them. They put numbers on them. They put states on them. They put pictures of fish, elk, deer, everything in the world. All it is is a place for ash to live, just something that's harder to clean. Get you a good bristle brush, maybe a little wisp broom, something like that. Every time you use it, you got to clean it. Get that ash off there. So we decided we'd buy it. We're going to take it home. As we're driving home, we look over there at the box and it says, you have just purchased a piece of pre-seasoned cast iron. You can cook in this when you get home. I'm not. I don't know what they pre-seasoned with and most of the time on pre-seasoned cast iron, it's as rough as the bottom of this lid. It's not smooth. I've had some so bad and I didn't know they made pre-seasoned cast iron because I don't buy much no more. I got plenty. But I've had pieces that are so bad, so rough, I'll buff them out. I'll take emery cloth, something, and I'll work on them because I want a smooth surface. When they're that rough, you've got to build up a lot of seasoning to ever seal that stuff over, and then the seasoning's really too thick. You're getting something that's gummy in there, sticky. Polish them off. So we got it home. We're going to season it my way one time, even though it's pre-seasoned. And I'm going to tell you this, there are thousands of different ways to season cast iron. Thousands of ways to take care of it. But these are my ways they've got me by for about the last 35 or 40 years, so this is what I use. Hot water right out of the sink. I'm going to put it in here, take the soft side of the sponge. I'm going to clean it real good. Dump that water out. Set it on a burner on the stove, about medium heat. And I'm going to watch it. And you're going to look in the middle and you're going to see that water vapor disappear from the middle of this Dutch oven all the way to the corners and then up the sides. And when it starts up them sides, it's getting hot. It's warm enough to season. You cannot season cold cast iron because all you're doing is just making a build up. The pores have to be open. It's got to be hot enough to use. And when you begin to see it creep up the sides of that oven, I guarantee you it's plenty warm enough. I know because I want it about 200, 220 degrees and my hands have been burnt so much I can touch it. And I can tell you, hey, that's pretty close to 200 degrees, I'll promise you. I season all the inside of my skillets and Dutch ovens with 100% pure olive oil. It don't take much. And if you're putting it in there and this thing is too hot and it's smoking, your oven's way too hot to season because you done defeated the purpose. You're smoking the oil, you're not seasoning with it. Take a little dab, pour it in there. Use a lint-free rag. Wipe it around the bottom, around the sides. You say, well, I'm gonna use a paper towel. You can, and you wipe it around through here many times. They got lint on them. You put it on the lid, Every time you season, you're getting a little more lint mixed in with a little more oil. Then you call your neighbors over to the house. You're going to impress them and make a cobbler. And you made one and you set it up there and they eat it. And you look at them and you say, wasn't that the best cobbler you ever had in your life? They look at you and shake their head and they say, tasted a lot like bounty paper towel to me. <laughs> Didn't taste like cobbler. Make sure it's a lint free rag. I used to buy them old service station rags run them through the washer and dryer twice before, <clears throat> before I ever started seasoning with them. So we got it hot, we use the olive oil here, we use the olive oil here. We preheated the oven in the house to 200, 225. We got a cookie sheet, we lay it out here, we take this oven, we put it on, put the lid first. On top of the lid and outside the oven and underneath, I use any cheap vegetable oil you want. Rub it on the outside, underneath, everywhere. It's on the bottom of that cookie sheet. Put this one on top of it. Slide them in the oven, shut the door. Let it cook about 30 minutes. Turn it off and just let it cool. Then it's ready to use. We have just seasoned this oven one time my way, even though it was pre-seasoned. The reason for the cookie sheet, you got oil on the outside of here. You put it in there and let it run down in the floor of that oven. When you get home, your wife's going to beat you with a stick, I promise. So make sure it's on there or line it with foil or something. 